Before any Trackmaster item comes to fruition, it needs to get a prototype. These are early samples of a product that are created to see what the final model will somewhat be like. Today I have compiled the most interesting ones and put them into the Trackmaster prototype iceberg. On to layer 1. So we start with Bertram, he got a prototype that was actually different to his final model. Here he featured pink stripes instead of gold stripes, the nameplate misspelled as Bertram with a U, and a brown buffer beam. The face was also different with thinner eyebrows and smaller pupils. He actually got a second prototype that featured gold stripes instead of pink stripes, the nameplate spelled as Bertram with an A, and a red buffer beam, yet still keeping that menacing face. I guess it's more accurate or whatever. Which is better though? prototype or finalized? Well, his lining in the show is closer to the prototype, but the face is kinda closer to the finished one. Eh, I'll go with the released model, at least the name is spelled correctly. But in the 2014 map, his name is spelled with a U, and his Ertl toy also has that error. But is it one? In the show, he never even had a nameplate, so this could only mean one of two things. Was his original name Bertram, or am I completely overthinking this? I guess we'll never know. On to the second entry. Ah, Steven. I'm not talking about the Revolution one, as that is pure garbage, but his Fisher-Price model is great. The prototype of it is something else. This featured Steven with two lamps on his buffer bar and a gold funnel, rather than the single lamp and black funnel of the released version. The prototype had its own story, though. In 2014, popular Thomas YouTuber UC Weapon purchased an alleged prototype, and the story goes that they got it thinking that it was, and I quote, special. This was proved correct when they received it and reported that there appeared to be hand tool finishing marks underneath and that there was a matte black overspray inside the rear of the shell. After contacting the seller, the response was, we got it from our supplier. Frankly speaking, we have no idea if it was a special handmade prototype, we just made sure it was original. This confirmed that indeed UC Weapon had gotten their hands on a prototype Steven, noting that it was hand painted and of course the gold funnel and two lamps being on there. Overall, which is better? Well, both are kind of of accurate, as Steven only had a black funnel for a very short period of time in the film, and a gold funnel is somewhat more correct to the white and gold one that he currently wears in the show. The one thing that solidifies the final model is better is him only having one lamp. He never had two, but I'm a sucker for gold things, so the prototype wins this one. Reneus, specifically the Reneus and the Dinosaur pack, which is actually a fantastic pack, based on the fan fave, the episode of the same name. The prototype is borderline terrifying though. As you can see, the differences are Reneus having no eyebrows, eyes which point to the right, and unpainted buffers. He got a second prototype too, with the only difference from it and the final model being the eyebrows being longer and an unpainted mouth. So, which is better? Well, the final model has eyebrows and front-facing eyes, so with no competition, the final model beats this one in a heartbeat. The Den Dart and Scruff prototypes. We'll start with Dart. As you can see, we start with the unpainted 3D printed engine, and then we transition to a hand-painted model. This is actually a prototype for the Oil and Trouble Dart 3-pack, and we get some cool behind-the-scenes pictures of the design of this model, courtesy of Google Arts and Culture. It wasn't just Dart's prototype that appeared on this website, but also Den's. Den also got the unpainted model that is weirdly placed on his chassis, and has no face, and also a painted model. Lastly comes Scruff, with an unpainted model and a painted one too. The coloured one has a few differences between it and the final model. These include no nameplate and no switch. Which are better though, prototypes or the final models? Well, for Dart, it's the prototype, as there are more painted details. For Den, it's both, they're literally identical. And for Scruff, it's the final model, more juicy details. Charlie, there is of course his Hit Toys cancelled model, but that was covered in another Iceberg video. I'm referring to the Fisher-Price prototype of Charlie's Greatest Moments pack, titled Charlie and Playtime. The prototype isn't vastly different, but still has some unique quirks, namely a darker shade of purple, purple wheels instead of red ones, and a different face. Which is better though? Well, in my opinion, it's the final one. The prototype one looks so incredibly off, and more similar to the Hit Toys one than the Fisher-Price one. Maybe it's a case of concept art, but I don't know. 
Diesel 10 is referring to his greatest moments pack, Diesel 10 Takes Charge. The prototype is certainly interesting. There are a good few differences here, which include a 2000 Diesel 10 that is covered with more oil than the final version, and a black tanker. In the final pack, they used a 2011 Diesel 10. The big change is the switch from the classic menacing face to the CG friendlier one. Which is better? Well, the prototype has more oil, so props for better detail but the final model has that sweet, SWEET green diesel works tanker. But hands down the best thing about the prototype is that face. Therefore the prototype diesel 10 takes charge, wins. Kicking off layer 3, we have the Logging Locos. We'll start with Bash and Dash. These models are absolutely fantastic, with some insane detailing throughout and some great rolling stock. Bash, for instance, has a taller funnel, shorter cab, grey side rods, grey wheel outlines and dirt detailing, a round truck with different tools and a blue narrow gauge coach. Dash has a taller funnel, shorter cab, grey side rods, grey wheels and dirt detailing, and a brown and light blue log cars with lighter coloured ends on logs and different chain details. Which are better though? Absolutely, the prototypes. These are masterful pieces and it is such an incredible pity that we got deprived of these. Ferdinand also exists I guess. The prototype here features Ferdinand with no logging loco symbols on his sides and a blue brake van. The face is also unsettling and the final model wins for him. The Billy Pack is the new friends one. In the prototype, he was intended to have different rolling stock, but the Billy model remains the same. The differences are Billy having a red soda farm van and a silver diesel tanker instead of a poultry van and green caboose. These are seen in this suspiciously high quality image of him in the box. One thing to note is that the diesel lettering is printed on wonkily. Which is better though? Well, I very much like the tanker and the aesthetic of the farm van, so the prototype wins here. Hey, NG, of course we are talking about his greatest moments pack in which the differences were him having silver wheels with side rods and blue stripes across the windows. There isn't really that much to say about him except that he even got an image of his packaging with the prototype in it, which is superior though. Well the final model is more accurate so I guess it wins, once again not really a lot to say about this one. Before layer 4 starts, I strongly urge you to subscribe for more, it really helps out and most of my audience isn't actually subscribed. Back to the video. Starting off layer 4, we have Playrail Digs and Discoveries. These are referring to the prototypes of Gina and Lorenzo. These are really just unpainted versions of the final product. For Lorenzo, the only difference is the black wheels instead of the red ones, and for Gina, the exact same logic applies. Really, nothing else to say about these except for the fact that it's cool to see some unpainted models from the Playrail line. About which are better, I prefer colours so the final models win. Proteus is an interesting item, as there are a few different prototypes for him. The Trackmaster Tomy Proteus, for instance, featured the number 3 on his side, likely due to the fact that he was developed from Sir Handel. He also had something up with his eyebrows, as they are heavily sloped inward. His little friend's prototype made him look up for some reason, and he also has a very sloppily applied nameplate here. In terms of which one is better, the finalised one has no number 3 and normal eyebrows, so I guess that it wins. Shock. Shock Danny is a product of the Thomas Anion Clarabel pack, not to be confused with the 2012 Thomas with Anion Clarabel pack. This pack from 2020 featured brand new moulded faces for the coaches, but both of them were smiling in spite of Annie being released with a shocked face in every previous release. Surprisingly, she was originally going to have that infamous expression. As you can see in this prototype, Annie does have her signature shocked expression. With that said, which is better? Well, the prototype is more accurate to the class but the final one makes her an equal with Clarabel and provides better play value, so she doesn't have to have an expression of continuous shock. But nostalgia is seeping over me, so the prototype wins. The fifth layer is fast approaching, so let's get into it. The road rail crossing is an anomaly to say the least. It is already not that well known about, as it didn't last for very long and was only ever released in one set. But, to put it quickly, it was part of HIT's road crew range. This was an item that would either let road vehicles or trains pass through. The prototype of it is certainly interesting, as it is a completely different design. You can see that the ground has a more yellowish tint than the final beige colour. The crossing itself has an entirely different style and appears to have a signal with it. I don't really know, as this isn't a high quality image. Which is better though? Well, the prototype appears to have more in it with the signal box, but the final is probably more accurate to an actual Crossing. So I guess that it wins. 
Well, this was a video from way back in May, actually, and I never actually finished it. I did, however, write a whole lot more script for it that you'll be able to read in the pinned comment, but I hope you enjoyed it, or at least what little of it was made.